to let you miss week worship at St. Mark's Lutheran Church for Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. Our service begins with the opening sentence. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. The service continues with Psalm 146, verses 2 through 7. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin? When your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly, your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from, above, from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, 
Then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of the, these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This uh, text in Matthew's gospel, this, this uh, story that Jesus tells, uh, this teaching of his uh, focuses on the, uh, on the end of the age at the coming of the Son of Man. And it comes in response to questions that were asked by the disciples earlier on. It was, tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. That's what they asked Jesus, and this was his response. So he has spoken of signs on earth and in the heavens, um, but he's also said that no one knows the day or the hour, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. And repeatedly, he has emphasized that his disciples must remain vigilant. They must be ready for his return at any moment. And one thing that is certain, according to Jesus, is that the Son of Man will come in glory to judge the nations. Be ready because the Son of Man is going to come. There is no question for Jesus about that at all. And the coming judgment, then, in this in this. Uh, in this message that Jesus gives, is compared to a shepherd separating sheep and goats. The criteria by which all will be judged is made really clear. Jesus has already said that the Son of Man came not to, serve, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So in the final judgment... It is clear that he has demanded nothing for himself. He has expected only that we serve him by serving the least of these. Now, I know that it would be easy to interpret this teaching as, uh, as a lesson in works righteousness. After all, the Son of Man judges people based on 
what they do or do not do. But the teaching is a lot more nuanced than that. Those on the right hand are told, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you. The kingdom is an inheritance. It is not a thing that they have earned. Moreover, the righteous are unaware of what they have done. Lord, when did we see you hungry? They ask. They've not been acting in some calculated way to earn God's favor, right? They've simply been doing what comes naturally for them in caring for their neighbors in need. Their actions are a sign of the relationship with a loving and merciful God, with, with the Son of Man who came not to, not to be served, but to serve. And those on the king's left are likewise surprised to learn that they have encountered him in the lowly and the needy. They too have been simply doing what comes naturally to them. They've been taking care of their own interest and not being bothered with the needs of others. And this too is a sign of their relationship or lack thereof with the Son of Man. They simply do not know him or understand his way of love and mercy. The parable of the sheep and the goats can be tough for us to hear, particularly as Lutherans who are wary of talking about judgment. Yet if there were no judgment, it would mean that God didn't care about injustice. It would mean that God didn't care about the suffering that is happening in the world, but in fact, God does care. God cares passionately about the suffering of the least of these and about whether we cause it or ignore it. So much so that Jesus bore this suffering in his own body in order to triumph over evil and death. Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead as we confess in the Apostles' Creed. He will return to put things right. And this is good news for all victims of injustice and evil and, and for all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Even as the Son of Man is now highly exalted, raised from the dead, and seated far above all rule and authority, he is not distant and aloof. The Son of Man is a king who still lives among his subjects, disguised as a pauper. He is a merciful ruler who still comes to meet us in all of our brokenness, in all of our hurts, in all of our fears, in all of our longings, in all of our sorrows, in all of our joys and celebrations. He comes to us and calls us to meet him in the needs of a broken and suffering world. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for public servants, for the government and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and in every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, 
Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen.